Hi guys, this is Shannon from Reptile Way and welcome back to our channel. Um, we've got a bit of a different video to bring you all today and it's going to be some ideas of what reptile pets you can get that are really, really good. They're not really too hard to take care of and um, yeah, the different ways you can go about housing these guys because it's really not just one way that you can house them. There's so many different ways and you can pick the best one that will suit, I guess, your living situation. Um, but anyway, let's dive into this video. Now here we have a very popular species of lizard. We've got the beautiful bearded dragon and this is Gimli. Now Gimli was the one who actually started my little reptile obsession and she was the first one that I started building reptile enclosure decor and then her entire reptile enclosure. So this little girl was the one who really did start it all. But bearded dragons make awesome pets. They're just so interactive. Quite a lot of them are food driven, but that's not a given. Some can be super picky with food, but they are quite active lizards. They like to run around a fair bit. Um, so yeah, they can be quite a fun pet to have. Now other reasons as to why bearded dragons make such great pets, they have fairly long lives, 8 to 15 years, which means you get to spend quite a lot of time with your scaly pet. They're great for people who have allergies who can't get maybe a dog or cat, but want an animal that's going to be interactive. And Gimli, very food driven like quite a few bearded dragons, which does make them capable of a little bit of training. Um, the cons though, they do need a fair bit of space, so enclosures can be quite costly. The need for UVB lights again can add a bit of extra cost. They need to be fed daily with the exception of having the occasional starve day. Um, and because they need to be fed daily, um, they're going to poo daily. So your husbandry cleaning may need to be done on the daily. So, you know, you may need to put a little bit more time in more regularly for these guys compared to other reptiles. But now we're going to look up some different enclosure ideas. So the rocky formation that's in this enclosure itself, I did build um, for a fella with a special needs bearded dragon. Um, if you want to know on how I actually built that, because you want to do something similar in your enclosure, check out that video. And also how I build in that video can be used for these Pinterest inspirations. You can go about it the same way. You just need to change the paint color. Um, turning furniture as well into enclosures is a great idea and go on to Facebook check out these groups like the DIY reptile enclosure for some inspiration and they do also sell enclosures on there and they're great for giving advice if you do get stuck. Now another great option for an Aussie reptile pet is blue tongue lizards. So this is Bangers, she's a northern blue tongue lizard and these guys, I refer to them as the Labradors of the reptile world. They make such great pets, especially if you do quite a lot of handling with them, they can become placid. When you get them as babies though, they'll open their mouth, stick their tongue out, hiss, make all these noise, puffing and out, but over time they do get over it and they can become great pets, especially if you get them to a handling stage like what Bangers is, great for kids. Now other reasons as to why blue tongue lizards can make really good pets, they are quite slow moving um, so it can be a little bit easier to handle these guys say in comparison to a flighty bearded dragon. Um, a bit less maintenance with them when it comes to feeding the adults. The adults only need to be fed once to twice a week um, maximum and they are less sensitive to temperature changes as well. So if you are a beginner and again you want to get your first ever lizard, um, blue tongue lizards are a pretty good place to start. However, the cons I have found with these guys are they have to be one of the most messy lizards. Um, well, Banger's the girl who's feeding them this one. She is quite clean. She poos in the same spot, very clean when it comes to eating. All the food stays in her bowl. But the other blueies that I have, messy little buggers. 
and this is their enclosure. They'll put um, dirt into their water dish, um, they'll poo in their water dish, they'll tear up all the real plants, fake plants, they just rearrange their entire enclosure. So again, you may need to do some husbandry maintenance cleaning on the daily with these guys. Um, and also, you may feel a bit of distress when they kill a lot of your live plants. If you have got a bioactive enclosure set up and you haven't put um, certain measures in place because they are little diggers, um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Now when it comes to enclosure setup ideas, like mentioned before, Pinterest and those Facebook groups are really good options to get your inspiration. But with all these reptiles I'm going to talk about, please just keep in mind when you're designing your enclosure, we can get caught up in it all and just get fixated on how it looks and that enclosure looks amazing, I want to do that. Just make sure it meets the needs of that reptile, the humidity, the temperature, um, substrate, all those things, how much does it climb? And um, so keep that in mind. If you do think a blue tongue lizard is for you, especially the northern blue tongue lizard, I do have a care guide video that goes over everything you need to know about setting up the enclosure, temperature, humidity, substrate choices, all that jazz. Um, so definitely do your research before you do purchase any of these reptiles and set it up before you get them. Just keep in mind, blue tongue lizards are skink, so you never want to grab them by their tails. You always want to make sure they're well supported, so having both your hands underneath their little legs. Um, so you can either hold them with two hands like that, you can hold them on your arm, or you can literally just place them on you. So they've got all their limbs on something and they feel comfortable. So next up, we have the children's python here. Um, this is Pearl, she's actually a marble children's python, but any of the Antaresias make really good pets and really good beginner pets. So if you want to get into snakes and reptiles, these are a really good starting pet. And they are um, among some of the smallest species, so they don't grow that big, and their enclosures don't have to be huge. Um, it's pretty easy keeping these guys. They're very tolerable of a wide range of humidity, temperature conditions. And we do actually have a care guide video on Stimson and children's python care. So if you are planning to get one of these, feel free and check that out. Now some pros as to what makes um, species in the Antaresias great pets to have is um, their small size. So it makes it easy to find enclosures. It's a bit less costly for their enclosures because you don't need to get massive custom ones. And they're great temperaments like mentioned before. Um, they don't require UVB as they are nocturnal, so that does bring the price down. And they're easy to find in Australia. The only con I can think about these guys is because they are smaller in size, they are a great escape artist. So you'll see with my enclosures, they've got mesh lids. Those are gorilla taped down because these guys can be little Houdinis. When it comes to black-headed pythons, they are always gonna be one of my favorite snakes. But before we get into any more information about these guys, we might as well start off by trying to get Diglett out of um, his or her, I actually don't know whether it's a boy or girl yet, but um, his or her cave. So what makes these guys such a great pet is the amount of stuff you can really do with their enclosure because even though these guys are considered more of a ground dwelling species, they are a jack of all trades. So out in the wild, we find them quite commonly in trees, probably in search of prey, um, climbing rocky outcrops. In order to get a feed, they will climb absolutely anything and everything. But obviously when you do have these guys as pets, you really do want to take care of them. So with Diglett here, this was the biggest type of enclosure I could probably get 
and keep in my house with a limited space. So the reason why I created this sort of enclosure for Diglett is to really allow Diglett to be able to exercise, but also make it safe. These platforms are quite big, easy to climb, and um, so Diglett isn't gonna injure himself. There's no way that Diglett can fall from the top level all the way down to the bottom. So if you do have limited space and you can only really build up with your enclosures, this can be, you know, a great option. Now some pros as to why you should get a black-headed python. Um, not only are they just a visually stunning snake, um, but they're really cool to observe because they can be active both day or night. Their activity levels changes depending on the time of year and the temperature. They also love exploring. So like I mentioned earlier, you have so much freedom to do what you want with their enclosures because they can be a bit of a jack of all trades. Now the cons is they can be quite temperature sensitive. So um, keep that in mind. The overall enclosure needs to be nice and warm with a you know fairly hot basking area. And they can be a bit more of a flighty, nervous snake. So you may need to put more effort into handling and take your time, don't rush into it. And if they do bite, it's probably gonna hurt a lot more than say a smaller python. Um, also, these guys are quite large snakes, so which means their enclosure is going to be quite large, and this can be costly because you'll either need to get, you know, a big tank, um, uh, do the build yourself, get a custom build. So just with their size, when they get to adults, brings the cost of their enclosure up. But I couldn't resist showing Diglett's baby enclosure. Now with the baby enclosure, I created like a hide on the ground that you can see there. A lot of soil for Diglett to dig in and hide. And so lots of ground things, but I also put things for Diglett to climb. Just to see what he preferred. And Diglett spent most of his time climbing. He climbed everything. And it wasn't because he was cold and trying to get warmer. That was on the cool side where he was climbing. So if he really wanted to get warmer, he would have gone to the hot side and climbed over there. Diglett just loves exploring and climbing. So test this out, create your baby enclosures with a few options, see what they like. But if you do think a black-headed python is for you, check out this care guide video. And again, with all these animals, make sure you do your research before you do purchase your reptile and also have their enclosure set up before you do get your reptile. So thank you so much guys for watching this video. I really do hope it gave you a little bit of inspiration and um, yeah, some ideas of enclosure setups you can do for your future reptiles. And until then, we'll see you next time. Bye.